you guys <laughs> made fat fucking bank uh the end no okay uh you made it through the second floor of the wizard's hideout uh, and did a lot of theory crafting as to what the fuck happened it would seem that the uh, owner of the home had died of a heroin overdose as to whether it's really the owner or if it was a setup or any of that kind of thing is to be is true is kind of hard to tell frankly however a lot again like in most cases a lot of the times of death don't match up with things that you've heard from That's there shit. yes uh mm. You killed a couple of chimeras. You saved a bunch of waifus. Hey. Uh, I believe you're actually currently located in, in the neutral zone of Chinatown. God, there are so many fucking people here now. I have to move a lot of tokens around. A couple oh, of Jesus. us to the succubus. Yes, a few of you had sex with the succubus, and that was awesome. Assuming we haven't slept yet, we should all be limping still. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking <laughs> of sleep, actually... Uh, Dr. Hunter went off to the hotel and did a lot of enchanting. Uh, sorry, uh, the enchant in, um, identifying in preparations to climb back onto a plane and go back to Ireland to hopefully cure himself of the vampirism he contracted from the vampire what bit him. Mm -hmm. I know. So far, vampir I know. it seems vampirism is not so bad. I mean, okay. It makes you weaker in the sunlight and makes you irritable and you have like less saves and stuff, but then at night you're awesome and you know, etc, etc. There are a lot of upsides except for if you happen to be a particularly Christian character. When you're like, is this the damnation of my immortal soul? <laughs> Blasphemy. Exactly. I mean... I like souls. I mean... I, 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 don't worry, eventually we'll have the uh, the adventures of the atheist cleric. <laughs> I, know, I think atheism is a class feature. Regardless, uh, after, you know, gathering up people and helping escort them out, yes, uh, Dr. Hunter went to identify some things. I believe the rest of you went off to the bar. Sounds smart. Likely with a number of individuals who needed escorting somewhere, and there's no better place really to put them here than that. Uh, two of the uh, individuals you pulled out of the fucking fire were Meredith and Kayla. Real quick, apparently Simon and me have no health bars to the rest of the party. Uh, that was fixed. No. Oh, oh they're right. Page. Oh, not on this page, of course. Oh, uh, well, that's going to be a fucking repeating thing, isn't it? There you go. Stay in there and working fine now. Excellent. And also this individual here, whose name I still can't remember and didn't check like I thought I was going to do. Why do I have a silver shoujo figure of Lana? In case, That's like, the me, key um, Like, I, I'm fairly certain that's a thing that you, that Lana needs to use to activate her glamour. Now. No, she's no. not. No, I've had no. Remember the silver was for like the it. demon staff in case like Lana's touched it. I think wasn't that what it was for? Oh yes, yes. Silver objects of personal significance help protect against demons. And so you apparently got yours in the form of a custom-made Bishojo figure of Lana in silver? I mean, A+. plus. Yes. That is what it says down here on the bottom of my character sheet. Good job. Uh, don't remember that. It was, it was a while ago. Oh, well. It was a while ago. There you go, we'll just decide that vampire's Did we all team. do that? I assume so. Didn't you have silver knuckle dusters? And obviously, the thing that meant most to mo most to Dirk was fist. Oh yeah, fist is pretty important. It's very, it's proven and a repeat important character feature. Mm -hmm. okay. Some would say a character flaw, but in Dirk's case, it's just a feature, a hundred percent. Anyway, Dirk continues to be the best. 
Of course, of course. Uh, and like let's no quickly, yes, uh, let's quickly go over the uh, loot you guys pulled out. Uh, I believe that yes. this has all been like literally handed out between you guys. It should be editable by whatever the fuck. Uh, so when you say that you've got it, I'll delete it off for you. Or maybe right. we'll just leave Everything it there existing. Except for the uh, scroll of the spell magic and the aegis of protection, or um, aegis of recovery, rather. Sorry. Uh, so scroll of protection, aegis of recovery, and then the enchanted hunter armor is the only things we haven't divvied up, according to my um, pinned notice in the uh, chat for D20. I, I have the aegis of recovery. Oh, all right. So then. All we're missing is, uh, or rather, all that hasn't been giving out is the Dispel Magic, Enchanted Armors, and then the Rat Fang. All right. The... This is out of the magical stuff. There's still the gems and valuables. But... Yeah. 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 No, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that we're selling them and then distributing wealth between characters. I would, I would, I would presume that you guys do that. Uh, by the way, the Dispel Magic Scroll is divine. <laughs> so who's going to take that? Yep. Cool. That was essentially so what that D2 we, was for. All we have to get rid of is the uh, rat fang bull crap, uh, and then the enchanted hunter armors. Yep. Uh, sadly, Dr. Hunter did not have time to go over the hunter armors uh, in detail before leaving. That's okay. Yes, yeah, so if anyone didn't remember what they looked like, they essentially make you look like Ring Finger Leonard. Very attractive armor, and it's masterwork and all that shit. Very nice. I know I want at least one of them, so Mahara can take it apart. So you can take Why? it apart? I want to take it apart. Why? It's in so so magic how it works. Maybe I can make a smaller, more lightweight, slightly less protective version. <laughs> Right. Uh, potentially, I would probably be challenging you on a lot of not very easy skill checks to do so. But that'd be something to worry about later. When I petition to get my armor, it's definitely not going to be my one that I give up if I get one. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. So let's see here. Yes, um, the rest of you, you're back at the bar. Uh, the elven bartender is there, as expected, as is the kitsune. Uh, she's essentially just drinking now by this point, and the tanuki, tanuki is uh, relatively bladded looking. A bunch of the regulars are there, uh, and, you know, you enter with Kayla, Meredith, and I've decided that the vampire's name is Tina. Because I still couldn't fucking remember Tina. her name. So it's Tina the vampire. <laughs> So, what should we do now, guys? I mean, our one lead was this house, and while it was pretty cool in terms of magical items, there was no staff piece there. Well, either... I don't really know, really. Either the guy's gonna come back to the house for something, or we continue looking throughout the city. I think the one we were gonna sneak out, really. Out of character, I believe we had a plan according to Mercendi. I just don't remember it, I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, yeah, uh, Tina and Denzel are uh, right. We agreed to, to like, stake it out. And see if anyone comes by it again, uh, thinking that maybe their trap is still intact, etc., etc. Which is not uh, not a bad plan, all things considered. But is there anything you would like to accomplish then in this bar? There's obviously information to be passed on as to who you want to go to that go to with. It's an entirely other meta. Uh, the elf is still technically an information broker, so the the truly neutral person would be the owner of this bar, and that would be the kitsune. Dr. Hunter has all of the um, notes on the Chimera research, correct? No, I do. Or rather, sorry, Dr. Simon, never mind. I mean, Simon's a it's doctor too, it's anyway. just a doctor of chemistry. I mean, I'm assuming, 
Yeah, like I was going to ask if we could sell that, and then I realized we probably haven't had time for Simon to go over them well enough to like have all the knowledge committed to memory. So no, that's gonna that that's gonna take a long time. This is complicated yeah. research stuff in something that he's never done before, like ever. He has exactly. a very very novice understanding of how magic works, <laughs> coupled with an incredibly scientific knowledge of chemistry. It is not the same as biology. Yeah, so I figured, all right, I might as well scrap that. We can't sell those notes. Give me a few levels in a little bit of time. We'll have our own chimeras guarding the castle. <laughs> it's um, safe as fuck. I'll hold, I'll hold you to that, good doctor. I'm not a doctor. I didn't get a PhD. Oh, you didn't get your doctorate? I thought that, that Simon Ross here, you, <laughs> it's, it's too fucking freelance for this shit. He's now reminding me of Krieger from Archer. I might not have gotten my medical degree from one of those fancy medical judging schools. From his, judging from his talk, I would say that he went to school, and at, before he would could get his doctorate, he call, he came to the conclusion that everyone around him was just a bunch of weenie little nerd scrub and weren't didn't have the balls to to make do real science, and so he 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 fucked off. Yeah. So basically, he's Krieger. Yes. Yeah. Krigly too. He has a degree, like a bachelor, I'm... but like he's just. He, didn't, he uh, never he finished didn't his doctorate, doctor. yeah. I might not have gotten my degree from one of those fancy schmancy high Ivy League medical schools, or any medical school, medical school for that matter, but I'm still a doctor, damn it. Yep. No. I mean, Poor Piggly too. better than a doctor, really, with his roles. This is, this is fair. Like, if you really applied yourself, you're just too fucking punk rock about it all, I suppose. Anyway, uh, the uh, information broker F will lean over the counter. Uh, let's see here. What was her name again? Uh, Lafilla. You know, I'll even put a little name plate up so you guys wouldn't do things like see people talking and all that shit. Hey there, uh, ladies and gents. You've come with a few new faces over there. Yeah, uh, these um, these uh, shadow kind seems to have been um, they were kidnapped. Yes, and possibly double gangerized. Um, pardon, pardon, sorry. Uh, and then also one of them will will put stick on him. Go. I think I'd know if I were a doppelganger. Thanks. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not saying you are saying. I, I, I see. Don't remember if he ever did. No, he mentioned he made the sharks. That or he didn't make the sharks. He no, he was going, going to, to make the oh, sharks. That's why there was those okay. very big skeletons. Okay. Um, but also, then you do raise an interesting point. Maybe we don't know if we're doppelgangers or have doppelgangers. Would you know? That's a good question. Exactly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, Vex is going to whistle the theme to X Files. <laughs> and you annoyed looks from Kayla and Meredith and Tina. <laughs> well, at least he got the references. Yeah, of course. This is this is America in 2010. Uh, the fellow will look concerned. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm probably going to want to know more stuff about <laughs> what the hell did you do, sorry? Well, you're well, an information broker. Me. Yeah. What's it going to cut? What's it gonna, what, what, are you, what are you willing to give for some information? Ah, uh, I see. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Yeah, all right, okay. Fair point. Let's have a think here. Hmm. What do you want to know? I'll trade information for information. Do you trade money for information? Mm, only for very specialist information. I don't think I could profit out of not knowing what went on with you guys. What with you guys coming back with hostages. Mm. But you're right, it's, it's right. professional courtesy for me to give something for something. So, you know, if there's something you want to know, I'll try and tell you. We do need to know about this guy. Which guy, sorry? 
I'm asking. I'm asking my um, the, the, the group, the party. Oh, right. Okay. What do we want to know out of this? What do we want to try and find out? Have we uh, out of character, real quick? Have we asked her about the staff yet, or no? Uh, the broker. Um, yes. I believe yes. Uh, it was. We were directed to a gnome. Yes. Who directed right. us to the house? So asking That's about right. The staff Bindle sticks the gnome. Good hmm. God damn it! Everybody loves Bindle sticks. Yeah, he gave me a good warning about my eyebrows. He did your eyebrows what? No, I gave, he gave, gave me a good warning about my eyebrows in Magic. Oh. But as every every chemist knows, eyebrows are ablative anyway. Ablative armor, basically. Mm-hmm. Ablative armor. Just, ablative eyebrows. You just have to stick new eyebrows on each time. Or draw new eyebrows on each time. Mm, she'll think about some bits and pieces. Um... Hmm... Tell you, guys... you what, I could try and help you move some stuff if you've picked up anything nice. Ah. Well, we do have some stuff. And by stuff, I mean a fuck ton of heroin. Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. How much is a. You know what? No, uh, there. Okay, there are a few things that I can help you move. Heroin is. I'm not moving drugs, especially drugs of that degree. Maybe weed, but not. No. Fair enough. Not touching that. How about Fair magical enough, suits man. of armor? Could you move those? Oh, no! Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus Christ. We're not selling those. That's just. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought I'd move, like, get him back into, like, the other country, because. Oh, know, I interpreted We have to get him across the sea somehow. Like, I interpreted it literally. Moving. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think I don't think the armor would be a problem getting across the sea. We could just like pass it off as collecting antique like armor sets. It's weapons that we would have a problem getting through customs. Not really like just a piece of decorative armor. That could just be part of like we're antique collectors or something. Uh, the fellow will put up a hand for a moment. I had meant move uh, in the way of you know sell something on uh, and get paid out for it. However, from here we can absolutely you know get some stuff through customs for you if you happen to have things again uh not the drugs that's on you to move uh the <laughs> weapons and shit like that we 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 have the ability to do so we have connections still i don't believe the i don't believe the armor is something that we need to like actually go out of our way to transport because i i do believe that we can get it across just by saying like we're antique collectors or like we came to buy this thing or something yeah. Armor isn't like a contraband material like a gun. Just have be. it shipped and listed as antique armor set. Yeah, exactly. Generally. So oh, is there anything that you want to try instead uh, to sell off? I mean, I can give you the hookup for that. Uh, sorry, did I'm, I'm checking the list real quick. Uh, does anyone want the Ring of Rat Fangs? The Ring of Adorable Squeaker? Yeah, exactly. Does no one want the goddamn rat things? I do not. Mention it now or forever hold your peace, because otherwise I'm getting rid of it. We, we also can make have, some money. We also have the wine. The rare wine. We wines. do have we do have the wines. And yeah. we also have gems and valuables, but um we might want to save that to do that over a period of time because it's four DC if we do it instantly and twelve DC if it's three months sale. Yeah. Let's just, yeah. Let's um, do the three months there. I can help you okay, move so wine. I can help you move some gems. But you're, you're quite correct. I would get a lot less if I tried to move a lot of those at once. I can move some. In my opinion, then we should probably do the rare wines and then the uh, Ring of Scow's Obsession. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see this ring here. If no one else is going to do anything here, I'm going to hand it over, but I am also going to say, make sure not to put it on. Sadly, it's to actually our... being identified right now, and it's with Dr. Hunter. Or, well, more, more specifically, it's at the hotel. Oh. Haha, <laughs> JK. Yeah. You've been, you've been pranked, Lafilla. 
Ah, uh, you didn't bring it with you? Well, regardless, when you do get it, I'll, I'll try and move some in some enchanted oh, stuff you for you. Punked. <laughs> and then she pulls away. It's like, yeah. We I'll... do have the wines on us, right? Yes, presume. Yeah, there was nothing that needed to be uh, identified about the wine. I mean, I mean, you could right. identify the wine, but it would involve probably <laughs> opening it and identifying it with your mouth. In that case, unless Sandra is like dead set on keeping this, I would suggest we sell this. So, so. Actually, could I keep one of the wines? Okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. But wine won't even get you trash, Sandra. Yeah, no, no, no. I was planning on selling it. I was straight up planning on selling it instead of like trying to, like the thirty seconds of uh, of a buzz you'd get for drinking all of them at once. No. What do you need the it. wine for, Mahara? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Well, if it's nothing, why aren't we selling it and making some money? Because I want it. Okay. It, it's. I guess it is Sandra's, and it's her decision. Sorry. Sandra, can I have some wine? <laughs> Pretty plate with a cherry and whipped cream and chocolate. It's like giving a child matches. And sprinkles. Uh, <laughs> okay, Sandra, hand, hand her one of the bottles of wine. Thank you. Uh, two DC. Yep. All right. You're down to two DC in rare wine. And yeah, she, I mean, she'll accept them and she has a place to store alcohol because you're in a bar. The owner mm -hmm. seems perfectly fine with hanging onto it. In fact, she'll then pause and go, wait, 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 wait. I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> and they essentially just sign a check over to you, like, right now. Uh, that is, the party gains two purchase DC to split however the fuck they want. I believe it's just both going into Sandra for now. Yeah, I, I think that it's both for Sandra. Uh, let's see, do we any of those books? Or any of those? Um... I say we keep the books so we can read them and vote. I would suggest keeping the books. I believe as of right now, Dr. Hunter has understanding vampirism as some nice, like, airport reading. <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, mummies, scarabai, and other Egyptian horrors as well as the living shadows, because I believe both will be useful for me, so I'm uh, not going to put those up for sale. Uh, sure. Let's see, Hunter wanted have... the Fae, and I wanted the Fae and the Fae, okay. Uh, yeah, I have the Fae Demons of the Inner and Outer and the Five on Learning and Teaching okay. Magic. Yeah, I don't think that we're going to get enough for our money to justify giving up this knowledge at the moment, guys. Maybe we should keep all of the books. <sighs> The scroll case itself will go for money. That thing is, like, ivory and gold inlaid and shit. Oh, it's fancy? Yeah, okay. the scroll itself has obvious worth as a magical thing, but I've, I've listed the two separately because the scroll case is also worth money. Do we want those scrolls anyway, even? Uh, well, one of them's just Wait, the yeah, magic, I... which is very useful. Oh, that... Yeah, I thought I thought the scroll case was just the thing holding dispel magic. Does that mean we have dispel magic as well as a case with something? No, no, you just have it's just the the it was a case and it had just dispel magic in it. But the case is okay. worth lots of money, so you would probably want to just keep the scroll and sell the case. In that oh, case, okay. unless unless uh, unless you have an objection here, I, Simon has the scroll, right? Or is that Doctor Hunter? Doctor Hunter. Oh, so the scrolls at the hotel. We're not selling the scroll though. We're scrolling. Selling oh, the case. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I would assume that we haven't taken the scroll out of the case though yet, since we didn't know it was worth extra money at no cost until just now. All right. Yeah. Then. Uh, yeah. You'll have to go back and and you know recollect your stuff and sort this out with Doctor Hunter. But if you give her a list, then she'll start looking up buyers. So we'll just assume that you guys get that done over what is essentially going to be some downtime while you're staking a place out and whilst uh, Dr. Hunter is back in Ireland. Cool. Going through a horrible, Good. horrible ordeal. I'm so Terrible. sorry. Terrible. It should have been me. It should have been. You could have been an emo. I mean, I mean, not really, because I'm already, like, immortal, but... Yeah, it's true. I don't need, I don't need your silly human workarounds. If only I had known. 
Okay, okay, no, no. no. Someone, like, someone just, yeah. just wrote, how about giving the ring to someone's little kid and making them additionally adorable in a very unscrupulous manner? That's not oh, fair. No. <laughs> no, let's, let's not do that. Hey, look, I got That's a ring important. for you, sweetie. And then they just <laughs> guess squeaker ears and a tail. <laughs> uh, Poor Lola. No. Oh, God, if her oh, tail turned a bit mousy, that would be fucking just impossible. Uh. Impossible. It's too much. Too much tail. Alrighty. Um, I suggested Bodhi. Let's not manipulate poor Bodhi like that. I think our best bet is to sell it. If we're just using this to make someone cute, maybe we should consider the monetary worth more than that. We'll get money, and then money can buy surgery. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, presumably you guys will, you know, talk about this. Uh, I the... will oh. give yep. her... Sli I will slide over a potion. A potion? Yes. She'll pluck it up and take a peek. Uh, what's inside? This is a po one potion of vehicle handling. It, it makes you really good at driving things. Potion of vehicle handling? Cars, motorcycles, planes, helicopters. How'd you come Little by some? That's, that's an interesting potion. Hmm. Yeah. I'm you... already really good at driving stuff, so I don't really need it. And I found it in... I don't remember where. Fair enough. Uh, let's see here. She'll place it down on the counter uh, and then pull out a little book. I'll see if I can source a buy for this right now. I might know the guy for this, and then we'll see if it's worth anything. And Mahara, then Mahara is going to just put on a pair of sunglasses and lean over the counter and pull something out of her pocket. And now that this little thing's out of the way, how about this baby? What can you get me for this can, for this thing? And she'll just slide over this, like, old, like, Game Boy cartridge of a Pokemon <laughs> Blue. This uh, baby right here's got 151 Pokemon the whole database, and they're all level, level 100. Um, Every one of them. I confess I... Don't know how to move a Pokemon cartridge. All right. Clearly, you don't have people in your elementary schools. <laughs> yeah, we call those workforce. And she'll slide well, the cartridge okay. back. She'll slide the cartridge back over. But nice try, cutie. Damn it. She called you cutie, so it wasn't a complete loss. I guess. Awesome. Do you have to do the bar tonight? Fun, sorry? To me, or to uh, Bob? Uh, to both of you. You both spoke at the same time. Oh, uh, all I said was, do we have anything else important to do with the bar tonight, other than try and barter off some of the stolen goods while we wait for to start the stakeout? Mm. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do the stakeout tonight. You, you, Your characters need, like, Real rest. I mean to snooze. Perfect. Well, time for me to use an idea that I've been waiting for all day. Uh, could I use the my uh, new ring of X-ray to check if anyone in this bar has a penis? <laughs> all right. Yes. Yes, because you can. We're about to rest. We're about to rest, and I'm gonna use. make it back that Constitution lost right instantly. All right. Nicely done. Okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all day. Except that ring is with Dr. Hunter. Everything no. is with Dr. Hunter. He's been identifying oh. all this shit for you. Uh, I'm dead inside right now. That's what I am. Dead inside. Dead inside. Uh, oh my goodness. 
Yes, no, I'm afraid the... that actually that actually upsets me a little bit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, I'm afraid <laughs> literally all of the reason you know that this stuff does anything is because it is actually right now being identified by someone who is busy like keeping themselves distracted from shitting bricks before they go rush off to the airport. It's entirely there possible are, right? that by like really late at the night that Dr. Hunter can essentially text you an inventory of shit. But we don't actually have it. You do not have access to it until you go to pick it up. So at some point you'll be like, oh man, a ring of x-ray. Fuck. <laughs> I can see in people's pants with this. <laughs> I promise to be entirely responsible with its use, everybody. That's okay. Sure you if, uh, if you're not, <laughs> you're gonna pay. <laughs> you're, you just you're see, my... see their bones. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It turns uh, out yeah. that it's just too specific, and it's just sees just bones and hips. Like, fuck. I mean, does it look like the kind of hips of someone who has a penis? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> those are some wonderful child bearing hips. I, I don't know. Um, can I make a spot check to the same effect then? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> No, I'm not seeing anything. Um, not unless it's made very, very obvious. Uh, oh, well. In that case, I have nothing important to do with the bar tonight, unless, like... Fair yeah. enough. So, anybody else? Um, nah. Nah. I guess not. <laughs> Alright, then. You are all able to uh, return to the hotel. Uh, when you get there, Dr. Hunter will have already left. Get to the airport. Uh, there okay. will be a collection of all of your stuff. Uh, does Dr. Hunter leave anything else there, or is that it? Uh, you know, like, just leaving all the gear so that you don't have to worry about, like, customs and shit? Yeah, he's leaving behind the, um, magical knife and his, um, Pistol and so on. I'm in a hurry to get back to Ireland. Oh shit, I'm still carrying all of my guns. <laughs> Just like it wasn't Sandra. So... It's oh, like... right. We got Lyra in this setting too. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if it's intentional, but we're back in the... Yeah, no, I just wanted to check that everything was there. Alright. Okay. Alright, okay. All right, so yes. Uh, Dr. Hunter... It's currently on a plane. Vex is going to la uh, chuckle ominously as he slips on the ring of x-ray. Are you going to test it out right now? Oh, should I? I mean, you're, you're still yet to sleep. I have still yet to sleep. Sounds good. I'm gonna test out that ring of x-ray and then look at the rooms around me. I assume that, I'm assuming at this point everyone's in their own rooms with the gear that was allotted to them, right? Sure. I, if you want that to be the case, it certainly can be. Everything's tagged in I mean, the baggies. If, if someone else has something they need to do and we're all still together at this point, then go ahead. But if we've all like retired to our rooms for the night, I'm gonna test out the x-ray ring before I sleep. Okay. I'm gonna go into my bed with my room with shade because I still smell apparently really really nice. Really really good. Really good. I'll she is continue. very excited about that. I'll continue reading like the magic journal for a little bit before bed to sleep. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Okay so when you slip the ring on um, you can see immediately by like looking down you can see a certain depth and then also like the outlines of pipes and stuff uh it gives you a good judgment of like how deep into surfaces your vision can penetrate looking okay. at your hands you can see like direct like bones and outlines uh but then as you look up towards your sleeves you can see just your arms and if you concentrate then the depth by which your vision is penetrating increases until, likewise, you're looking at the bones of your arm. So you okay, appear to have so a you appear to have a modicum of control of how deep your your vision penetrates, but there is so a limit to actually, how much matter. 
that was one thing I was going to ask. Like, can I control? Like, am I always going to just see bones so I can't be a pervert with this? Or can I, like, control? No, uh, you would appear to have the ability to define how deep you're looking up to a certain point. You Absolutely can, perfect. You can see just about through the walls. They aren't quite thick enough in this hotel for, to, like, prevent your sight. So you can see into you can see into one room either side. You can't see into two rooms. Like, that's that's too much wall. Like, if you can't look okay. through one room and then also through that room's walls into the next. Let's let you know. I you can look at your neighbors. Uh, you can see that there is okay. a uh, Mahara and a shade getting unchanged. Well, obviously, I would never intrude on the privacy of my party members. You so do see I'm the shade as a penis. Oh. Haha! <laughs> but it's only traffic. Well, it's, it's only traffic. After taking in that observation real quick, assuming I have some more time, uh, I'm just going to take, oh wait, uh, this is, oh damn, this is a high class, like, hotel, so the bathrooms are attached to our rooms, Correct, right? you will have on suites. Well, I'm just going to take a walk down and back the hall, looking um, in on all the rooms. Mm, you'll be i guess you wouldn't really know the the time limits of the weakness or something so uh, yeah, as you're going as you're like halfway down the hallway like the first minute ticks over and suddenly you're like oh shit i'm winded Whew. <sighs> first off did i did i see anything interesting halfway down the hall all right halfway down the hall uh give me a d4 of fate sweet no, 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 nothing stood out as particularly interesting as you're going nothing down this hallway. No, no. Alright, well, as I feel that sort of, like, l immediately loss of energy, I'm going to take the ring off. Yeah. Uh, the energy loss is there, but you don't, like, feel this, this draining of your, of, of your strength any further. But yeah, it's basically right for, like, the, just all of a sudden, it sort of feel there's, like, a tugging sensation into the ring, and then it feels like you just try to run up, like, a bunch of flights of stairs, and it's winded you. Okay. So I'm just gonna... Oh, pardon me. I'm just going to, um, note to myself that it appears to have a one-minute duration before the cost intensifies before heading back to my room. Yep. All right, cool. And yes. Uh, hey, Mahara, make a dex check. Oh, I'm okay at those. Yeah, I'll see how you're doing. We'll Definitely. see what you got going on. Unless you happen to have performed booty. Uh... I would say that you actually have advantage considering your um, previous encounter. Okay. I okay, have performed lack dance. Does this count? Oh, no. That's... Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, let's, let's see how poor Shade holds up. I should make her a character sheet now that I have the ability to do that. Oh well. <laughs> oh my. You fucking, you own, you own this trap. Tee hee hee. Tee hee hee. So innocent. Lust, lust for traps intensifies. There's all them, all them cutie surprise sneaky fuckboys. Hey, that's, that's Vex. <laughs> and There's nothing surprising about Vex being a fuckboy. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to, I meant to trap it, not the fuckboy. <laughs> okay. If you say so. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, do you, you use any no. kind of protection? Oh my god, what a loaded question. <laughs> yes, no. What was the question? If Kina used any yeah. kind of protection with Shade. Mm. I'm going to roll a wisdom check. All right. For my, for the fairy to have considered this possibility. Okay. She did. Yeah. She, right had she has considered this possibility. I had to make sure because I mean it's entirely possible. It's entirely. <laughs> She'd be like, eh, it probably doesn't count. Ah, whatever. 
I haven't heard of the Fae being involved in weird pregnancies. That never happens. Yeah. We never get tied down with weird Fae pregnancies. <laughs> Don't be Different silly. Different species and whatnot. You know how it is. Yeah, no, no. The, the Fae have never got involved in anything along the lines of multiracial, <laughs> multi-species kinds of... No, that doesn't happen amongst them. That still doesn't happen. No, it's just a fairy that's... You know, oh, shit. <laughs> that's a that's a me tail. Oops. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, no need to make a roll, then. Good show. You are the first character to use a condom in this setting. Good job. Oh. Achievement get. <laughs> Response. By the way, before uh, Vex goes to sleep, I would like to make sure that I sort of skim over the two books. Oh my god, Mayor. She's like crazy responsible for a fair. You are. You have a child who you take ca good care of. Uh, you studiously, like, create helpful things, and... Okay, it starts to get a little bit dangerous and irresponsible afterwards. Oh, that's fair. Alright. That's true. Dr. Antwerp used the condom. Uh, no, you used God's Lube. <laughs> <laughs> my faith is my protection. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you may be a doctor, but you're also Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> so you best watch the fuck out. It is already homosexuality. It's true, but I mean, Catholic ca Catholicism never had anything to do with prophylactics. I'm sure. But, but yeah, no, uh, Mahara is fucking crazy irresponsible. She's more responsible than a lot of the party have been in cases. I mean, I what suppose I suppose Sandra is really responsible because she's actually ensured that she's so pickled that she's immune to sickness. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, like... she did owe a favor to a member of the Winter Court for a horse penis. So maybe she's not quite that responsible <laughs> thinking about it. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm oh, never gonna. Wait, I can't remember if Dirk used this. I can't remember if Dirk wait, used it kind or not in session. Two. Do, uh, do Vex oh, and Sandra? I remember watching that episode. Oh, pardon, sorry, Nix. Do Vex and Sandra have adjacent rooms? Because I don't think until putting on that ring of X-ray, Vex had any way of knowing about Sandra's horse cock. I believe it got mentioned. Um, ah, never mind then. So you've yeah, but I mean, you would have got the chance to see it. It's very horsey. Very Perfect. big. <laughs> All so perfect. It's just, just like you just start pressing up against the wall, like yes. <laughs> but it's like, and then you go, why won't she do something sexy? It's just her sat down on a bed drinking. Like, god damn it! Please give me this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like climbs a bit. She didn't even undress. I don't get it. <laughs> God, this room sucks. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe I'm not doing it right. <laughs> I imagine right. that the first time this ring was ever used by someone, like a like a mummified body was found outside a changing room somewhere. <laughs> they just left the <laughs> ring on the entire time. <laughs> Until they started to look like they belonged in mummy scarabs and more. Or whatever the fuck I called it. Mummies, Scarabai, and other Egyptian horrors. That was it. And speaking of the books I own now, yes, is there uh, any sort of um, like bonus that I'm getting from reading either of them? Like, uh, I, it's, I something you, it's something that you, it's something that, yes. Uh, whenever a knowledge check would come up about something that's relevant to either of these subjects, uh, you would be able to uh, have a bonus on it, inherent plus two to any time that kind of check comes up. However, learning a thing in a book takes time. Uh, just skimming it isn't going to give you anything, and it's going to take, like, essentially a week is the time considered to have been spent, like, picking up and putting down a book in order to make sure you Fair learn enough. what's inside. So, like, I mean, it'll take you two weeks to have the both of the knowledges of those books committed to memory. All right, and there's not going to be any sort of, like, bonus to skills for stealth from reading it, correct? Uh, stealth is a no. Uh, 
the of the shadows is uh, about like shadow based shadow kind and shadow uh, shadow magics more specifically. So I mean, there's information that's relevant, and when you see it done, it's going to help you out. And if ever something is, for instance, stealthing up on you, uh, but it is. It falls under, like, the special stealth categories where they've been augmented by shadowy magics. I will give them, like, a negative 2 DC when considering your perception checks against them. That's sort of how that kind of thing goes. That's all I wanted to know. Yep. Other than whether or not Sandra really does have a horse car. Yes, uh, and she does. Those are the two things I had to find out tonight. (laughs) Does she have a horse car? Nay! (laughs) (laughs) All right, excellent. And now we move over to Dr. Jonathan Hunter. Your journey back to Ireland is peaceful, blessedly so. Dragons don't jump on a commercial flight, as you would have expected. Otherwise, that would probably have become news somehow. It would have been the darn terrorists. And they're fucking flying dragons. There's only one explanation for it, and it's the terrorists. No, uh... And you arrive back in Ireland, it is... Let's see, you would have left at night. Uh, you probably just arrive, and it is night. <laughs> you went back yeah, and died. Yeah, since we're West Coast. I believe that, yeah, I, was gonna, I believe that's how it works. It would be night to night, going backwards. It would be effective... Actually, it would, yeah, it would be effective 20 hours ahead, I think. Okay, and if it was a late night flight, then essentially you, you've flown backwards to jump forwards. So it's night, but it's earlier in the evening, next day. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, you're almost certainly feeling kind of tired, uh, and you're probably jet lagged. Uh, could you do for me a con check? Or a fort save? I think it's called fort, isn't it? Yeah, fort save, please. Too many systems. Okay, um, you're tired, but you're powering through adeptly. Uh, and then, yes, uh, what's the first thing you're going to do? Hmm. I am Captain Paranoia, and I am unarmed presently. Correct. But I do believe, um, I, my, um... Custom order new 57 should actually be finished by now. Uh, correct. That will be at the castle waiting for you. So, yeah. Head to the castle. Pick that up. And, um. And now, do you. Are you, are you quiet when you head to the castle? Because, you know, it, it's evening. You've been gone for not especially yes. long. You're quiet when you arrive. Alright. Uh, give me a stealth check. Uh, move silently? Uh, yes. Alright, cool. Uh, you are able to essentially sneak into your own house. Um, you can see, just like peeking into the main room, like the moment you slip through the door, uh, there is Lana, like, in the fucking... in a, in a new and freshly cleaned, uh, Totoro, um beanie bag or curled up in a ball watching like I think probably will have fallen asleep in front of the TV and then there's just Bodhi standing statue style next to her mm. there is one person you can't hide from and that is the ghost butler however when he like comes floating out of one of the walls he notices that there are people in the room who are asleep so he will just instead look to look to you inquisitively is everything quite fine sir Speaking very softly to you. Not particularly, old house. Nothing, I... nothing has happened to the others, has it? They're all right. Um, I've contracted vampirism. Oh my! And he'll like lean in and he attempts to of course do the thing where you know they lift the eyelids and look under it but as time goes through he goes of course 
Um, I'm afraid that's out of my area of expertise. I, I take it your early arrival is because it's someone's area of expertise, sir. Indeed. Very well. I've been informed the um, owner of the broken table may know something about it. Very well. Uh, if you insist on uh, remaining quiet, uh, some packages arrived for you. I can go and fetch them uh, and bring them to you here at the door as opposed to have you... And then he indicates, like, the stairs and that would involve sneaking past Lana. Yes, please do. He goes up through the ceiling uh, and then will return with a box that's still, like, tightly wrapped and you can see that it's just fucking covered in, like, you know, licensing stamps and all that kind of shit. Uh, there was a lot of paperwork attached to this one, but thankfully we had some assistance in making sure it got in okay. Uh, and you're handed off the box. It looks like it has been signed in. Actually, it looks like Wodehouse's signature. You can clearly make out his name is like the sign, the signatory on the box and the packaging and all that kind of thing. He doesn't seem interested in explaining how that happened. All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for um, seeing this for me. Not a problem, sir. I do hope that you uh, are able to resolve this situation as soon as possible. And assuming that you manage so, please do be careful. Uh, I'd say careful was my middle name, but if that was true, I wouldn't be in this situation to begin with. That would make sense. Very well. Good luck, then. I shall wish instead. Thank you. No, it has. And then he will uh, gently shut the door for you, so you're able to slip away. On opening and unstringing your fancy schmancy new box... Uh, also, presumably you have, like, a, just a taxi waiting outside for you, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, you probably don't want to actually then unbox your gun in the taxi, thinking about it. Yeah, you would probably unbox it inside. Yeah, okay. Oh, what, the broken table or inside the castle? Inside the castle. Oh, okay, and so before he will have closed the door, you'll have had a chance to, like, unwrap it and take a peek inside the box. And they're, like, it's fucking covered in uh, ballistic safety foam, and even though, you know, it's not a loaded gun, it's just the gun, uh, there are a couple of uh, fast-action replacement magazines, and it's a very pretty piece of work. And you can see that there, it has been custom molded to the specifications of your hand. It looks sighted, it looks perfect. The action is so smooth. It's a nice gun. Hmm. Roadhouse will, he'll, he'll probably fetch you some ammunition so that your gun is also loaded. Yes, that would, that would be handy. And there you go. So, I mean, it, you don't have just... In fact, wait, I was going to say you don't have spare ammunition. You do. You keep it by the bucket load. We have an armory. You do. You have an armory. And you have a bucket where you have loose ammunition. Just <laughs> not in magazines. You just have an ammo bucket. Hopefully we have several ammo buckets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, of different calibers, yes. It's not all like, it's not like a fucking jumble bucket where you just have to rummage <laughs> and hope you get Oh shit, I hope this is all thirty eight. <laughs> what three oh eight? Fuck but yeah, uh yeah, you have uh two magazines. Cool. Yep, and a taxi will wait for you and uh, drive you down to the broken table. Uh, it is approaching late as you get in, which means the broken table is, is technically at its busiest, all things considered. Uh, and let's. Oh god, it's actually still like piled from when there were last people in here. I have to go through it all. Oh jeez. Alright. So the GM layers with you all. 
Everyone, <laughs> GM layers, go! Oh, no. And I'll just yank out the people who matter here. Token. Token. <laughs> Token. Most importantly. <laughs> no, yeah, most importantly, Ganja off the Weed Wizard. And now, where is my actual... Like, I had a token for the bartender. Um... No, not the humane. Human. There's nothing humane about this individual. He said he'd put Nyx down. There's no, nothing humane about him. Oh well, no, he would have done it. He would have done it humanely. You wouldn't have felt a thing. So why didn't he? Because we accidentally got Nyx put down before the threat became really apparent. All right. Uh -huh. Oh my God. How, how does it save us the trouble? And anyway, why did I ever think looking up the word "man" would be a good idea? Because <laughs> of you, man. You man, man. And also, Salah, man. Duh. Like, there's a lot of things with actually just man in it. Here we go. This fucker will do. Uh, Leia token. Not the token you used before. I can't remember where it is, and I don't think I have it left in my archives. Maybe I do. Uh, you used the uh, the token for the Pathfinder Iconic Wizard. I don't remember it though. I have so many like just unnamed places. Uh, not that one. Nope. Nope. You're just called copy, are you it? Uh... No, god damn it. I don't know. I don't, there are a lot of fucking archive cheats that I would have to fiddle through to figure this shit out. Why do I think it's in there? that one right there. Let's see here. Ah, okay. It wasn't far off of the thing that I randomly... Yeah. At the dude I randomly picked. Let's see here. Wizard. There we go. No, no, you're not a drawing. To token. <laughs> uh, he seems surprised to see you when you sort of pile into the door. But he is there at the bar. There is another individual who is just doing basic business. And let's just throw in a random other person. Bloop. I don't, I don't know what about them is the thing that their token is named. What's it named? Come wizard. I don't know why. They do have a blush. <laughs> Maybe they've just exerted themselves, generating some cum. It's possible. Okay, it's possible. I can only assume that there's just a lot that's cropped that this picture of her face isn't saying. But fair enough. <laughs> so, Dr. Hunter. You're in the bar. Ganjalf is in his Ganjalf corner. Uh, there are a couple of humans scattered around. Uh, Affie's perched up on the counter. Uh, looks like she's do dooting around on a phone. And the owner is there. John will make his way over to the bar. Ah, Doctor. 
You've arrived then. I didn't expect you for a little bit longer at least. Have you already finished your business in America? Everything uh, immediate. If I didn't leave now, well, everyone else is looking for more leads now, and if I didn't leave as soon as possible, I figured I'd end up having to leave at, an, at a much more critical time. Understandable thinking. Um, we've already made a, a measure of the preparations. Uh, if you would like to hang around for another hour or so, I will see to the rest of it. All right. Would you suggest I be sober or drunk for this? I have a feeling it may be somewhat unpleasant. Um, it's going to suck either way. I don't know that alcohol is going to do much for you in this situation, but you're welcome to try. It's um, it's it's not going to be fun. Alright, and um, can I get a bottle of whiskey? Of course you can. Uh, and he will pull up the bottle, and uh, then he like nudges the other the on duty bartender on the shoulder, and will it would look like he goes down to wherever like you know cask storage is and in the underneath. Is there anything you're going to do in the meantime? Pretend you're Sandra, just... <laughs> Another bottle! Drink into unconsciousness. <laughs> I'm going to voluntarily fail every alcohol save I have to make. Alrighty. Oh. Let's see here. We'll probably need one of these. I, like, have to build up a little, little mappy map for this. Not really many things that I can use, but oh well. Hey, I grabbed a thing and I thought it was going to be like, you know, where they have a white background. And he just, and the, aka the worst, and it wasn't. Hooray. Hooray. Awesome. Rune thingy. Um, a classic. And then I'm going to drag you over to here. So, you arrive in the main basement. Uh, there are a whole number of kegs and shit that I can't be asked to put in there lined up against the walls. And it smells of, like, food and booze down here. Uh, but there is an area that's been cleared out. Like, the floor is immaculate, uh, apart from the fact that a, what looks like, a series of inscribements done with uh, blue chalk have been done in the ground. In the center of this ring is a bed that looks very familiar. It looks like it's been stolen out of the hospital, essentially. I'm sure he acquired it legitimately. Eh, possibly. Uh, likewise, there is a like small cleaning sink in the corner uh, uh, that's been... It's been... it's The sink itself has been recently cleaned so that it is looking shiny and sanitary. And there is, as well, a board here with implements that you recognize for surgeries. Uh, and then, surprisingly enough, and I could not find an appropriate uh, item for this, is a number of IV stands. Like, a lot of them. And there are a lot of empty IV bags. Huh. Now, Dr. Hunter, uh, I'm going to level with you. I've not tried this before. It's going to be very unpleasant, even if it does work. And frankly, I have pretty reasonable odds of killing you with this. Are you 100% certain before we begin? Uh, keep killing me, you say? <laughs> Essentially, yes. Uh, I'm going to be taking out all of your blood. 
umgedreht. And then? And then I'm going to do something way too complicated to explain to someone who has made half a bottle of Glenfiddich disappear. And then I'm going to put the blood back in you again. You know, if you said this before, I wouldn't have drunk. This blood alcohol can hardly help whatever magical mumbo jumbo you're going to do. Mm, honestly, I'm about to pull out essentially vampirism in a some kind of base form. <laughs> Whether there is alcohol in your blood or not is entirely inconsequential. And at the very least, it'll make the first, I don't know, hour or so of having your blood pulled out of you less awful. Well, past that, I should be unconscious. Should be. He doesn't appear convinced that you will be unconscious for this uh, period. Uh... Oh, no. Oh, no. Good luck, Dr. Hunter. If... You know what? Let's fucking ham show I guess. I don't know what that means, but if that means you're going to be <laughs> yeah. trying, then feel free to get on the bed. It means I'm gonna do it, and I don't want you to tell me the odds. That's very fair. I wonder, I wonder if as a priest, Dr. Hunter can do anything to, to put the odds slightly more in, in his favor. By this point, the wizard has gone over to the sink. Uh, he's pulled up his sleeves, soaping, scrubbing, and then pulling on gloves. It's the wizard surgeon. It's hardly surgery, he's just going to be essentially taking all of Dr. Hunter's blood. But you've got to do it sanitary-wise. Oh, yeah. Well, like, ooh. If... If it comes down to a choice between, like... Keeping going and it'll kill me, or just stopping making me a vampire... I... I think I'd rather not die. Understood. I don't believe that there are going to be any half measures, but I will endeavor to do my best. Uh, if I'm not unconscious, I can try to kill Rich myself if it gets too bad. Of course. And the bed is on top of me. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, Dr. Hunter just crawls under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm ready now. Dump. Squirm, squirm, squirm. <laughs> I just imagined the bed like tipping over on top of him. He's like, good enough. Excellent. Yeah. All right. And then he begins. He starts standing up essentially a bunch of IV stands with a lot of empty bags uh, and then he starts plugging them into your arms. I mean, you've, you've been through this before. Even while you're shit hammered you can be like, this one's the best vein just pick that one. You will point it out. <laughs> and then he realized probably one more veins. Is that one? And that one? And that one? And then you, you're actually just seeing double vision so you're just pointing at the same vein again. But eventually he gets you hooked up, uh, and then the process begins. And it's not bad. You mean, if anyone has ever had their blood drawn in real life, the only part of it that moderately sucks is if they struggle to find a vein, uh, and then it's just waiting and getting kind of sleepy. At least that's been my experience of having my blood drawn. I know some people have to go in for that whole thing because they're able to give, like, platelets and shit. Oh, I couldn't do that. <laughs> The doctors were so worried because when I gave blood, I did not get tired afterwards. Nice. 
I always got a little bit sick. Like I could feel the needle moving in my veins, and that just bugged me. Yep. But yes, uh, he's still filling up bags, uh, and f now it becomes time to do some rolls. <sighs> Please don't kill Dr. Hunter. I mean, I don't want to. I know, it's up to the rolls. But I'm, I'm just gonna, I might, I might be fucking putting another player death on my bedpost. Okay. This one is entirely voluntary. This is true. This point, mm. so. All right. First things first, make me a will save. Okay. Um, I do have to ask. Um, I have the Aegis of Recovery. Um, is that gonna, since this is sort of recovering from a disease, is that gonna help here or no? Um, I think it will be good for your aftercare. It's not effectively going to do anything at this point in time. Okie dokie. So for diseases, it's daily saves. Like, it lets you try again when you wake up fresh in the morning. We'll save. So yes, first save. Will. Nice. Um, while this process is ongoing, uh, you can feel like this just, you know, it's it's not an aching, terrible cold, it's just a cold clamminess in your limbs as blood is being pulled out of you, uh, and you feel the compulsion to stay awake. Uh, and effect essentially, you stay to stay awake and continue to concentrate. Concentrate on what? You aren't entirely sure, but you're fairly certain it's a good idea to keep your brain following this nebulous point in nothingness. And so you do so. You start to feel also slightly less drunk. That might be a side effect of there just being less blood to have blood alcohol in. Or it might be something magical. Honestly, you're pretty far gone by this point. It's relatively hard for you to tell in this ephemeral setting. There's a brief moment where he has filled up a bag and he ties it off and then he places it to the side. And then he gets another one, and then another one, and then another one. And he keeps drawing blood from you. Um, more than you're pretty sure a human should have in them, unless you're seeing double again, which is entirely possible. Uh, your body just feels, it feels dry, like your lips are chapped now. It's hard to find moisture in your mouth. And still this, like, blood is being drawn and you, you're not sure what's going on. Can you make another will save for me, minus three? The human body contains about 4.7 to 5.5 liters of blood. About 7% of your body weight. Yep. 17? Excellent. Uh, you are able to stay awake. And now it hurts. Like, every part of your body feels like a billion pinpricks of fire trying to, like, you would want to move and thrash around, but trying to do so is impossible. Like, if you roll your eyes down to your visible arm, it looks withered. Like, you look mummified. The doctor is watching, uh, as, so I said doctor, uh, the, <laughs> the wizard playing doctor is watching as this happens, uh, but he's no longer paying attention to you, he's paying more attention to the blood, and he's got essentially what looks like a sharpie and is drawing on these IV bags, a series of sigils and runes that it's impossible for you in this current state to read. <sighs> uh, can you make a fort save? What is it for giving a... Your heart stops beating. That's probably the part that hurts the most. Like, there is a cramping sensation in your arm, and there is a tremor, and you can feel your heart try to pump on nothing, and that doesn't work, because that's not how hearts work. You have an immediate heart attack, and then it goes still. Make another will save for me, please. Still with the minus three? 
correct. Oh. I finally did it. Okay. You manage to stay conscious, although conscious is the wrong term, you are no Consciousness longer... Consciousness is relative. Yes, yeah, so you are... Your, your brain is still doing its brain thing, and your eyes, although they feel dry in your skull, are still able to look around and observe. They're not, you're not exactly receptive to information, but your brain is able to tell you this much. You're pretty sure you're still alive. However, your heart isn't beating. Breathing feels impossible, and this creeping, unpleasant fire sensation in your whole body is... Well, it's your body essentially on fire. Like, if you'd had your eyes closed, and indeed if you try closing your eyes and opening them again, you would be pretty sure that you were actually just lying down in a pit of fire. It's it's a very, very awful situation, but you manage to remain conscious. Uh, and then the wizard, the bartender, the owner will look to you. I don't know if you can hear me. But this next part might actually hurt. Oh dear. This might... this might hurt. <laughs> well... Alright, I'm going to be asking you to make a bunch of fort saves in succession. Okay. Say goodbye to your action points. I'm going to need... Three fortitude saves, please. All of them at minus one, then minus two, and then minus three. So, first one's getting an action point. Okay. That's 18, 23, and... 18, 23, 23. Okay. You realize what he meant when he said, this might actually hurt. Your body does some very embarrassing things as you lose the ability to keep a hold on yourself. Not that your muscles are responding to you in any shape or form anyway. Whereas you'd felt like you were on fire before, that seems like some kind of cruel joke. That might as well have been an ice bath. Your entire body is very much truly aflame, uh, and you are, even without the ability to, to respire, screaming. Screaming your heart out. Like, it comes out as not even really a sound, because there's nowhere for it to come from. But your throat still seems to grow raw as though you were screaming. Blood starts to fleck, fleck your lips. You didn't even know you'd had any left. Whatever, there is like a meagre supply like in your lips that crack. And then there's this sensation again. Your heart beats. And your heart beats again, but there's no blood. At least that's what you think. Looking down at your arms, you can see like little pinpricks, little spots. Sort of like if you got heat rash of like still yet there must have been little dredges of blood somewhere in your body and it's leaking out of your pores essentially down to the very very last drop and now make a will save for me Seventeen. and the world winks out Unconsciousness finally blesses you. Your heart stops beating. And you stop being able to think. Eight hours later, you're going to wake up again. With blood in your body. Oh, oh shit. Your blood, and... The very first thing you can do to test yourself. Like, it feels like the worst hangover you've ever had again and again and again and again and again. 
You're in your same old clothes, but you appear to be entirely clean. Of course, wizards, prestidigitation, not a big fucking deal. Nick, you're making random noises there. I'm sorry. Um, you're able to, like, you know, maybe scratch yourself or do some kind of test. You're still in the same bed. The uh, wizard is, is, is gone, essentially. Um, you try to scratch yourself to test whether you whether you can bleed again uh, but your arms and legs are bolted down to this hospital bed with again likewise familiar hospital style restraints likewise there is a uh, gag between your teeth pressing your tongue downwards ensuring that you can't bite through it your entire jaw just fucking hurts your throat is sore your head is pounding you try to just like be sick, but you can't. There's no contents of anything to do so, so it's just, like, dry noises. It's the worst you've possibly ever felt, apart from that time where you died and had all your blood pulled out of your body. Yeah. Compared to then, you feel awesome. And considering that was about eight hours ago, it's not a bad thing. What do you do? There's not really much I can do. Um, so... Wait, and, um... Even though John can't use his mouth, um... Pray silently. Alright, fair enough. Your mouth isn't as dry as you would have expected it to be. Like, a quick glance to the side reveals that you've got, as opposed to an IV of blood, there is saline solution that's making its way into you instead of things leaving you, which is a good sign. Uh, and a few more hours will pass. You drift in and out of consciousness a few times, but the sensation of overwhelming sickness will leave after a while. <clears throat> Dr. Hunter. It was quite a scare there. You died... Mm, 13 times. And he will pull the piece out of your mouth. He will carefully take the uh, saline ivy out of your arm. Uh, and when he does so, he like grabs at where your arm is, uh, and then will squeeze it right where there had been uh, an injection. And it hurts for a moment, and blood beads, and as he then wipes it away, like, there's still, like, another spot of blood forming, whereas beforehand it would have just then sealed itself back up. Well, that's a very promising no sign, wouldn't you say? Yes. And you will uh, sort of fiddle with the buckles and straps. Looks kind of annoyed finally gets them slackens them up you're welcome to try and stand up now mind bending a hand of course uh, and he will hold out an arm to you in offering John will brace himself and then try to swing his legs off um to transition into a sitting position. The world doesn't swim, you don't fall backwards or anything. You feel like you've just been really hard drinking for a while now. Does standing work? Then? It does. I mean, you now suddenly would like very much to go be sick, but at the same time, you're stood up and it's okay. Your body appears to be working. You're, you're like, you're probably a little bit like numb in the knees from just having been tied down in the lying down position the entire time, but some stretches will probably do you a world of good. Well, Dr. Hunter, I dare say that all signs of vampirism in your body have been flushed out. 
he will like step around to this counter over here and then he put he holds up what looks like an ashtray full of like gritty dust hmm by my count that would appear to be 13 diamonds you owe me um would have appreciated it if you told me that in advance. As if it would change anything. I won't expect that kind of payment immediately, and I'm sure we can sort something out later. He seems pretty nonchalant about the whole idea of diamonds. Alright. They aren't big ones, jeez. <sighs> fine, fine. I'll see if, uh, you know what, yeah, uh, getting those um, immediately can't do soon enough shouldn't be a problem. Whatever you say. I mean, if they aren't big, then Dirk and Vex, that. Even if Dirk isn't anymore, they have criminal contacts. We can just damn well steal some if we have to. Oh goodness, I'm not a criminal, Dr. Hunter. I don't want to receive stolen goods. Do you know people actually sell things these days? Yes, indeed, they even s sell small diamonds. It's called a jewelry store. Or, you know, try to cut... Maybe you can buy them wholesale through a mining company. <laughs> we could just, just buy them. Just a bunch of gold just... and jewels from a safe. How many I mean, they might be it? cheap, but don't yeah. go to one that's from Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, are, there are wholesale deals... Oh, run wrong on here. There, there are um, quite definitely wholesale deals for the purchasing of, of diamonds, but they come at a cost to the human soul. Uh, he will <laughs> walk you up, and then Affy will zip in your face. Doctor Hunter, Doctor Hunter, it looks like you're not dead, or not re-dead, or maybe not undead, or maybe unliving. Hmm. I am no more and no less than a man, Affy. That's kind of boring. I mean, you could be like something more than a man. Ooh, ooh, you've just tried being a vampire. What about a werewolf next? Maybe a ghost? No. Ooh, Doolahan! <sighs> John will just hug her. Beep! Beep. Beep. That's good, Oh god, don't, don't crush Afy. <laughs> yeah, she will give you a hug back and pat you on the cheek. Yeah, yeah. Crush it's fine, yeah. and you're not in the you're not in any crushing condition. She'll she'll give you a hug back. Admittedly, it's just on your face, and then she'll give you a pat, and then flutter her <laughs> away again. She's so tiny. Yep, she's small. Very well then. Uh, so that happened. I saw you while you were down there. That looked like it sucked. I was told I couldn't go down there, but I took a peek, just a little peek. And she looks over at the boss. Just a little peek. To start with, it did. But, uh, in the end, whatever was going on with my body pales in comparison to what my mind saw. Hmm. And what was that? Flutter, flutter, flutter. Affy, you are a very dear friend. I'm not going to tell you what happens after death. What? But that's like the most interesting information ever. Ah. Fine. And then she'll pat you on the head and flutter over to her perch where she drinks from like an espresso cup of what appears to be just tea. Can I have one of those, please? Of course. But she says that and looks, um, I mean, probably you can. 
<laughs> and then the boss will look, yeah, of course, yeah, and he'll fix you up a drink. And that's how Dr. Hunter survived vampirism, you guys. God damn. Mm -hmm. That was stressful. Congratulations. Congratulations. How close was I, Scal? Why would I spoil the surprise? Okay, uh, there, there were a couple of occasions where you got very, very close. Uh, for the most part, you did quite well on those checks. Uh, the early ones, you totally steamrolled. The later ones were very, very challenging. Um, but you survived. Congratulations. Let's have a look here. Uh, you, you feel normal. I mean, you feel like a piece of shit, but you feel like a normal human being. Everything is fine. That's time to get crunk on the plane. <laughs> yeah, lab created diamonds are doing wonder for the magic industry in Urban Arcana's setting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you know it's the misery of digging them out of the ground that makes them so fucking valuable? It's just, an, it's just an industrial process. Yeah. I like that in the chat that Vadalant was trying really hard to get something from us. Like, maybe he'd come out of this with some kind of boost. He died like 13 times trying to have vampirism pulled out. Wouldn't that change him? Like, no, he tried to do the opposite. He tried to unchange himself. Nothing changes, and that's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed, what should happen is that he should have, a, like, a... 100% just like a lower fortitude, uh, a lower constitution score, and a shortened lifespan, but he doesn't. Yeah. And he should be Although, big, and that's because he's just a player character. Anyone yeah. else who does this probably isn't making it past, like, 70. Yeah, player characters yeah. don't play that by the damn. rules. But for reals, but possibly also immune to vampirism. You would have to test the theory, and on asking it, I, <laughs> but there's uh, no, no fucking idea. Oh, no. <laughs> Do that again? Hell no. Yeah, uh, he will confess that he yeah. has no idea what the long-term implications of what happened will do to you. So far as he knows, you didn't stay dead long enough that any of the diamonds were used in what would be con considered a totally fucking impossible resurrection. Essentially, you were just pulled, like, screaming back from over the brink 13 times overnight. That's not so bad. Yep. Essentially, he died once around 13 times in a row. Could have been way worse. And he patch from the back and insist that maybe 13 is your lucky number. <sighs> Has to be for someone. And there you go. Uh, you will be able to get a flight back out. Uh, and, you know, as long as you ask at the broken table, they, they say they can probably get you squiggled past customs. Not a big deal. Oh, so that sounds gross, having diamonds growing from your body. Ugh. That's like, incredibly strange. But then again, it would be quite fu it would be quite funny if you went, here, have a box of diamonds. They're all from my pubes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if they can get me past customs, then that would be great. Yep. You will be able to arrive essentially the next day? Sort of. It's weird. Oh yeah, the diamond from your own body stuff is like a, it's like a, it's, it's a, an option for funeral service stuff. So you have, and instead of you, you get cremated and you have your ashes turned into diamonds. Then used to, you to choke a hobo to death. Because <laughs> they're worthless. <laughs> no, it's actually... Actually, they, I think they eventually can turn it for a, a little bit of an extra fee compared to turning you into a diamond. They'll turn it into like a ring or a uh, like a fancy necklace. Or, I mean, you could have your ashes put into fireworks. Or blown into glass. Or, uh, yeah. Or, you know, instead you could be like not cremated. You could be put like on ice, dressed up like a lobster as though it were a giant fish bar. <laughs> <laughs> you could be dressed up like Superman and pushed out of a helicopter whilst going over the Grand Canyon. 
Uh, there are lots of better things to do with the body. Uh, I, 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 there's one where you send them like a, not really your ashes, but like a sample of your DNA. They will splice it into a tree. Then you get cremated and uh, put that over said tree, and then you're like constantly recycling yourself. So wait, so truly, it can be said that you are fucking yourself for all of eternity. Yep. <laughs> Great. Yes. That's how you really want Science. someone to know. Fuck them. Yep. But oh well. So guys, uh, I don't know. Uh, does Doctor Hunter like? What do you do once you're out of the broken table and on your way to a plane? I think, to, to be totally honest, he's not gonna actually want to fly back immediately. Okay, uh, so what is it that you do after you leave? Just... Just walk for a while. <laughs> Enjoy being alive. Uh, yeah, just look at all of the little things that to just there, but nobody ever bothers noticing till they're about to lose them. And then stare at the sun just because you can, except it's winter, so it's miserable out. <laughs> Hello, world, I'm alive! Oh, fuck you too, man. Fuck you too, world! <laughs> <laughs> like a windstorm just knocks a fucking Tesco bag into your face. It's soggy. <laughs> the fact that it's soggy made that horrible. Yep. Uh, yep. As a welcome to the, welcome like to the guys, UK. It just splashes you with water. Yep. Welcome it's, to the UK. Uh, yeah. Ex yeah. Like everything. Like because thirteen is now your lucky number. Or like the moderately like movie retarded things happen that are now supposedly like it's your lucky number. It's like black cats, ladders. All this shit is just happening. Like. <laughs> It starts to get a little bit movie prattful, but you're alive. And and you notice the or the dwarven Ouroboros, and you're just like always a mystery. Ooga chaka, ooga 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 chaka. And then after his walk, he's gonna just go into like a a restaurant, have um breakfast or lunch, whichever is appropriate. I. I'm Probably not. brunch. Have some brunch and um... get the biggest steak they'll they'll make for you. Mm, probably don't want to rush food down. Your body didn't have any liquids in it in it for a while. Yeah, I a light salad, I think, would actually be more appropriate. Um, yeah. You know, he, he's a doctor, he's relatively used to the sight of blood. He's not used to his. <laughs> well, well, come on, you've approached death his. plenty of times. He, yeah. Let alone Your character's all died of his plus 30%. Yeah, okay, fair. But oh well, at least you drank before you did it. Mm. Yeah, I was like, it's not gonna matter how much alcohol he drinks. All that blood's leaving him. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, morning rises in America. It's a lovely, peaceful day. What your fuckers do? Well, I'm going to pick up a new lockpick set. Sure, you're able to source that kind of thing. Uh, like, there's just a workman's place where you can go and buy those miscellaneous bits and bobs. Might take some taxi riding to get around. Uh, yep, Sandra can get drunk and, and eat a big wooden steak. Yeah, yeah. The tended right. to order the biggest <laughs> steak they can give you, huh? <laughs> He's back! Is he a vampire? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. See, I thought we were being ironic when you said, oh, I guess the biggest stake, and then you write it, and I was like, oh, I missed a pun. No, it's just a misspelling. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. I'm gonna join in. Yep. Our ex is probably just sleeping in. 
Fair enough. Yep, Simon can go off shopping. Uh, Mahara, you wake up on a shade. Yay, I'm gonna snuggle. She blushes and squirms, and you still smell like really good. <laughs> uh, let's see, we'll save for her. She has control of her faculties, however, and will just pet you. <laughs> Okay. Aww. Oh, I guess after a bit I will roll off, and I'll maybe pick up that book, and just glance through a page or two, and see what is what is this book actually about. Uh, which one did you get? Was that the Fey book? The Fey and the Furious. Excellent. Okay then. <laughs> that uh, you know what the Furies are, right? Uh... I'm gonna take that as a no. No. Okay. Uh, let's have a look here. It is a reference to the Erinye. Uh, it's a combination of how a lot of the Fae stuff also exists within Greek mythology. Oh, those furies. Oh. Yes, exactly. It's a bun. Okay. Yes. Um, they are known as the deities of vengeance. It's basically... Oh God, how best to put it? It's a lot of stuff about how uh, really, really spiteful fae have done things in the past, how they've interacted, and there are fae considered to be of a more infernal variety because of their kin with vengeance as opposed to um, keeping deals. Like, the Fae make deals and no one goes back on a deal. They will try to complete it. And if they fail, they probably died in the process and then that's considered, you know, cost paid anyway. Or they got tricked and then that's part of the game and that's fine. It's a very, very rare occasion for anyone to just Welch. Yeah, no one, no one cuts out on a deal with the Fey, like ever. Uh, it's they uh, on rare occasions will be given a warning, and that's usually enough. You've never been told to call in your own debt, uh, and you don't really know anyone who has, so you don't know when they try to be insistent. You know enough to know that it would be a very bad idea to. Even try and squirm around it. When the call comes, you answer and you do it. Yeah, exactly. You don't say no. Yes, this is a lot of stories. Most of it's like storybook content stuff about what happens when people really do fucking skip out on their bill, essentially. When they ditch their tab. Hmm. And, uh... There are some vicious, vicious stories in there. Um, oh, this shit's metal as fuck. It is. There is. It is a very, very metal book. Uh, the story of Aaron Ye. If there ever comes a time, like over the next week, as you commit this stuff to memory, uh, where a check would be relevant to Fay and the keeping of deals, uh, you'll have plus two on that check, assuming you spend the week, you know, no cool. taking this knowledge down. Like, it is, it is valid, usable knowledge. A lot of it is stories, but there is enough meat in there that it is relevant in some admittedly fine circumstances. Like, it's unlikely such a thing will come up, but if it ever does, you'll have plus two. Okay. Yeah, those things take a, a... All books, in general, will take a week to accumulate their knowledge. There might be, like, the very rarest occasion where I'm like, you can read this bitch in a day, and then buzz it off. Like a fucking pl it's like a pamphlet of what to eat and what not to eat on mushrooms in the forest. Okay. And which ones you want to eat if you want to party. And that's everyone's warning. You haven't heard from Dr. Hunter yet. Should we give him a call? Best not. I can't I think we should remember just... how time zones work. Oh. 
John would be eight hours ahead of his house. <clears throat> hmm. What does that mean? He has, so does, does that mean he's living would be in the his future? Afternoon. Fair enough. Yes, yeah, so, uh, he would. He's a time traveler. He is a time traveler. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's British, and so it works. We're all time travelers, actually. <laughs> like, that's quite literally why, you know, daylight savings doesn't work the same here. Fucking daylight savings. <laughs> it's just be, we just, just be rid of it. It's so inconsequential. We don't need to save any we daylight. Should. Daylight's for yeah. chumps anyway. Who need fucking time? needs that shit? Not me. Not me, friendo. Yes, uh, you could try and call him. He would be he would be awake and alive right now. Not that you guys would know that. Not that you'd have any idea. I sure hope he's doing okay. Yeah, hopefully he is. The best we can do is just follow the plan until we hear from him, though. Chug, chug, chug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no longer sipping. Gulp, 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 <laughs> gulp. You know what? I'm gonna make a secret check for a thing. Don't worry oh. about it, anyone. Sweet. Okay. Huh. Okay. Cool. Don't worry about it. So, what are you guys gonna do? I believe the I don't know. If was... Vex is awake at this point, then he's just sort of like blearily stumbling around and waiting for the others to tell him what to do and where to go. Well, after I pick up my locket set, I will send a text out to everyone saying that I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and keep an eye out on that building for any suspicious activity. Ah, uh, so you're going to be taking it in turns to watch the building? Possibly. I'm just going on ahead since no one else is out and about or close to it. Uh, do you want someone positioned inside the building or just uh, just to watch it? Like possibly up in the attic. I mean, honestly, yeah, I'm just sending out the text firstly to hope to get everyone's attention to we should be at this thing. We yeah, should, we should be, we should be doing our job instead of like, <laughs> alright, the doctor <laughs> isn't here anymore, everyone. Mum isn't here to tell us what to do. Let's just fucking <laughs> slack off. Just start throwing balls off cock <laughs> so we just have to be fine. Yep. <laughs> Which is why, like, I'm going to be at the building, maybe inside of it, and waiting for the rest of everyone else to show up while just watching over it. Yeah. Uh... Okay, sure. Yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, Sandra will probably be pretty uh, after she finishes her breakfast of steak and eggs. She uh, and vodka and uh... <laughs> steak and eggs and uh... oh, and vodka, all of that too. Yeah, steak, uh, eggs, and a martini. Yep. A uh, Winston Churchill martini. Which <laughs> means possible. you have to call someone a bitch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you're a bitch. Uh, and right. uh, Simon, Sandra. Simon, Simon, okay. Simon, Simon. Let's see. Yes. Here. How do you want to go about your setting up a stakeout? Like, there are multiple ways to do it. There's the typical movie way of like getting in a vehicle and hiding behind a newspaper, etc., etc. There are definitely lots of ways to do it. I'm gonna need you to describe it to me, or I don't know what I get to do. I think the best option would be to wait inside the house and check around periodically throughout the house to make sure there everything is in where it should be and that no one has moved through it or moved about it. We have earpieces that we can communicate to each other with, correct? 
They have a range limited to, like, at least being in the same kind of number of blocks. I mean, you do also just have phones, so you could be in a group call or, like, a Skype or some shit. So, oh, yes, there... sorry, I assumed we were all, like, near the house. And this was just his own initiative. Like, while everyone was getting ready, he went off early to grab the lockpick set and moved over to the place. Um, okay. But, yes, I, I'm gonna need you to, to... Again, I need you to be specific about what you do. Just saying inside the house isn't gonna be enough, either. I need you to actually tell me what you what you do. Okay. Like, spell um, it out for me. Alright, every five minutes I will move from room to room going throughout the house. Checking okay. everything, making sure that nothing has been moved, nothing is out of place from when I last was in it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, that's fine. How did you get to the house? What was your method of travel? Uh, let's see. I had a taxi that I used to get through places, so I used a taxi to get back to that place. All right, excellent. And let's see here. Uh, you have no troubles getting to the location, uh, and when you enter, it doesn't look disturbed, or it doesn't look more so disturbed from when you were last there, like knocking shit over and being an investigator. And there are like, there are fucking pool balls like all over the floor, and like the cracked and damaged in some places. Like a doctor must have been throwing them at a fairy at some point. You know, subtle shit. <laughs> But overall, yeah, uh, your day will be better. All right, everyone else, what? The, how how are you doing things? Spell it out for Mama's go. Um, once I've woken up, I'm going to. Uh, did Simon leave any kind of like note or message? He texted you. Others? Okay, sweet. So, assuming I have the text, I'm going to also head towards the house and. Once I'm in uh, radio contact range, I'm going to check with Simon to make sure he's there. Right, Max, I'm here. Get inside. Let's get this stick out going. Alright. Um, maybe instead of having all of us inside, I could be outside somewhere hidden to let you know when... If I see someone that looks like they're coming towards the house, I can let you know beforehand rather than having everyone inside get surprised when this man walks through the door. If someone comes, that is. Right. Whatever works best for you. Let's, so let's do I need works. to make a hide check to, like, sort of get myself, like, out of sight, but still with a uh, vision of the entrance to the apartment? Hmm. Okay. Uh, as opposed to hide, which is very specifically, like, moving around, like, being being physically hidden... Uh, first give me an intelligence check. We'll see how you do for finding a place. Okay. Like... Alright, cool. Uh, there is some more obvious locations for a stakeout than others. Uh, one such place you do notice that would work out quite well is, uh, there is a tattoo parlor on the other side from this building, uh, that happens to have, like, an upstairs room, quote-unquote. Assuming you can sneak through the tattoo parlor and get to the upstairs, you'll be able to watch in and no one will be able to watch you. Like, there's no reason to know, to believe anyone would be in there watching them from this parlor. Like, there are other locations that would work for looking in, but there is a chance it would be noticed that you're observing from the outside. Perfect. In that case... Um, so, yes, now the, uh, now, uh, move silently, then hide. Oh, move silently and then hide, okay. Yep. First, here's my move silently. <laughs> Yeah, good fucking luck. You right, sneak I'm into the building with no fucking problem as someone is like. Hide. Yeah, good fucking luck, tattoo artist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, he wasn't even doing anything like noisy and tattoo. You just fucking saunter in. Like, the door doesn't jingle in it. Like, as you open the, the door that should ring the jingly bell, like, your finger's already at it and you grip the tip of it and you close it, like, shut. Uh, the moment that he turns around is when you skip into the room, and you even have a moment where you can just, like, fucking hip thrust at nothing and then just walk upstairs. He does not notice you. <laughs> Alright, sweet. Once I'm upstairs, I'm going to get in position. I'm gonna make sure that I'm still in radio contact range with Simon, and then I'm going to prepare myself for a bit of a long wait. Excellent, yes. Uh, now that you're close enough as well, you don't have to be doing phones, you can actually be on your earpieces as well, so you're in constant contact, assuming you ever need to be. Excellent. And next up... Uh, 
I believe that's Sandra and Dirk. Yeah, sure. How do you guys, uh, what uh, do you do? Do you join in the stakeout or do you do other things? What's up? See, the thing is, don't think we are particularly uh, the sneaky type. Um, so where, where would we use best? Um, all right. Can I can I like roll a uh, knowledge tactics to see if that gives me any like uh? Well, ideas? okay. If we're, yeah. going, we're we're staking out this place, and we need to know not just when they're gonna, not just if they come by, but we need to have we we need to have a strike team ready to jump out and and hit this guy when he goes mm -hmm. in the build. So probably like we might need want to like rent a van and have it parked down the street from the place. Called Flowers by Irene. We need a, we need a crime van. Okay. That, okay. That sounds uh that sounds like a good plan. Uh so does Dirk want to join in? Or does he have another plan? That's... What now? Hello? Fall asleep just then? No, no, I, I just... You guys, I... Uh, you started talking as soon as my, my brother came home. Oh, alright. Uh, what do you do for... Uh, the stakeout. Uh, there is suggestions of getting a van to stake out from so that you can have people be like fucking strike team alpha and pile out, but what do you want to do? Uh, Vex is hiding in a tattoo parlor. Um, uh, Simon is already indoors and doing like little repeat room to room sweeps throughout the day. I'll probably join Simon. Okay. All right. So that will be both of you guys in the house. It's fine. Sandra's getting a renovation van. Or... All right. Let's just give you a little map of this place. Doop -doop. Doop -doop 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 -doop. Uh, you guys in there. Uh, there. Wherever the van is. Sure, if you want the van to be there. Just give me a ping or, and I'll give you a shame. Uh, should it be close to to Vex? What do you guys think? Tell you what, someone draw close me just to... like a fucking like bright pink square or whatever and you can call it your van and just place it somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> close enough yeah. where you can watch the building and rush inside if need be. Uh, there we go, yeah. Cool. Is there All any right. way to delete that? Yes, by clicking on it. Click on it and press the delete button on your keyboard. Okay. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, in fact, no, she'll be in there as well. Although, uh, Shade herself will just pick a place to be hidden inside the house and will just stay there. Supposed to do any room to room stuff. Describe your van, your van acquisition. If it's not just like a plain white van with no windows or tinted windows that looks like absolutely something out of a terrible like pedophile warning commercial, I'm gonna be really disappointed in you all. Oh oh no, this is uh like a uh... free candy written on the side. <laughs> oh god. Thank fuck. Oh oh no no, this is uh this is a hipster town if I remember straight telling us remotely. So it's gotta uh, be like 
。ああ。ん ?Okay. <laughs> 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 weird cargo van? Yeah. Yeah, weird cargo van all painted up like with some sort of like weirdo art mural. 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 Yeah. I mean, it could be、uh, this. This beauty.、Uh, I would actually sort of like it to be that beauty. All right. Yeah. God, why does it have. You get the nightmare machine. Yeah. The nightmare machine. Not the mystery machine. No, this is the nightmare machine. We have the、uh, bombed out It the Clown truck.、Uh, we also happen to have a、uh, bombed out Donut truck as well, if that one suits your fancy. Fucking hell. Oh, that's just sweet tooth.、Mm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not the mystery machine. I was really tempted to just do the mystery machine again, but this time I didn't. You get, the, I, you, no, get the, you get the little car of nightmares. You resisted temptation. So, Mahara, at some point、yeah. while you were headed out to like, also join in this whole watching thing, Yeah. Shade gives you a flower. Ooh. I. Mmm. Well. <laughs> Mahara will smile and will flutter her eye, a little, little, little eyelash, and will put the big flower. I guess in her hair? Yeah, it would fit. But she will sort of blush and glance away and then go join Dirk inside the house. She doesn't know how to do people things. She learned from your Earth Core chips. <laughs> It was a check for moderately smitten. After this is what, like, the third time that you've completely ruled the bed encounter? Like, I guess so. Like, she did not, she never stood a chance. I think every time you rolled incredibly well and she just kind of didn't. She, yeah, I mean, yeah. There you go. Alright then. And now, can everyone give me a will check? Because boring is waiting. Other way around. Waiting is boring. I'm sorry. Can I, I avoid this the, check? By the way you said it hurt.、Yeah. Can I avoid this check because I have cocaine on my character? That's a very good point. Yes, you can. Alright. Oh, wow. I'm actually able to. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is actually able to stay on target. We'll save you, say. You... Nope. Congratulations, Simon. <laughs> you died of boredom. Will save you're actually supposed to be one of my better ones as well. You decided to take、oh, a nap. Two bass got minus one from ability damage the other day. Yeah. Hey, wait.、Uh, I mean, you recover one point a day、uh, for sleep. Right, and that went back to my constitution, so I have my plus two again. Right, right. And you still got will to go.、Uh, Mahara, that 11 is what you have first there. Oh, wait. Why did I roll twice? I don't know why you rolled twice, but you did not do. I was like, looking and I was like, you did not do that well. <laughs> I can't remember when Simon lost Khan. Weird, I, I didn't even notice、It、that. Wasn't I had... that from like the frozen lock or something that I was trying to get out so we could actually get into like that attic room? That might have been it, yes, actually. I'm pretty sure I did constitution damage to you with it. The icy it chill that crept like, into his veins. It, if it had been from like the、um, vampiress blood drainy thing, then we got iron tablets. Yeah, no, yeah, you got over that one quite quickly.、One. Uh. Alright, so, Mahara, it is really boring in this van, holy shit. Holy shit, there's like nothing to do, what the fuck? Uh, Mahara's gonna, gonna open up her, her bag and Walt is gonna pull a neon bright yellow Game Boy Color and start playing Donkey Kong Country. Excellent. That game was incredibly hard. It was. Me, at least. Yep. Simon Rossi. If you think it's boring in the van, there you're you're in 
Yeah, uh, Mahara, sorry, I may have gotten bored, but Simon, you're a, a not just incredibly bored. There are so many more distractions in this place. There's only more things that you could be doing that's not just going from room to fucking room. There's so much magic I could learn in here. This is true, and there is a very big, valid distraction. You're carrying with yourself a bunch of books about magic, and they're more interesting than going from room to fucking room. And after, like, an hour of doing that and nothing happening, you're like, fuck it, as long as I'm near the entrance, it's fine, and then you'll settle back and read a book. Dirk, you are far more fastidious. However, you see Simon just sort of sits and reads a book. <laughs> what do you do? I'll, I'll smack him. <laughs> get, back, get back to check and work. I'm checking the thing. Yeah. All right, can he make an advantage roll now? Yeah, yeah, uh, he can roll again. All right. Okay. Oh, you are there we go. snapped out of it. Like, I all right. Yeah. Me. Yep. Sandra. Should I roll non-lethal stacking damage? Nah. Actually, you are really jack and strong. Uh, <laughs> you heck him up. You tap him, and it just concusses the shit out of him. Heck him up. Bro. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. You don't have to <laughs> roll for damage. Sandra. It's really fucking boring waiting in this van. Holy shit. And now you can hear, like, just in the back, like, the chirpy noises of Donkey Kong Country coming from a Game Boy. So distracting. And you're so bored. So bored. What do you do? Tempted to go back there and just watch. And just watch mm -hmm. her play? Yeah. Yeah, all right, so... Excellent. Does All she right have then. to make this Saturday checks to see how good she's doing? Uh, yeah, well, fuck it, sure. That sounds like a giggle. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> yes. I want to know. So curious. Dexmerity. Ah, oh, you're doing. Flat D20. You're super good at Donkeys, Kongs, and their countries. Yeah. You get that annoying darkness minecart thing first try. Feels real good. Oh, uh, fuck that level. Yeah, fuck that level. Also, my voice is completely cutting out again. I'm repro fast approaching my limit, but we've only been going for a couple of hours. <clears throat> Alright then. And Nyx, yes, the moment that the boredom first starts to creep in for Vex, uh. Balls. Yep. And honestly, just, you know, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you paying attention. You're paying attention a lot better now. Definitely lots of things you should be paying does, attention yes. to that are absolutely not that. It's a little bit annoying, actually, downstairs. You can hear occasionally there's that fucking buzz from the tattoo machine, and it's a little bit distracting. Maybe you just go down and hit him. Ah, oh, but that would kind of get in the way. Nope, you're a professional. You're definitely a professional. That's why you just had to take the edge off. Exactly. Sounds about right. So I'm, I'm keeping careful watch on this building. Correct. Seems out of character. Everybody else Impact. is fucking around. <laughs> oh, my no, fault no. is so boring and sad. Yep. Like, uh, what do you guys do for feeding yourselves? I'm gonna have a granola bar. Fair enough. And how long do you intend to stake out? Are you going to be staying there overnight? Uh, first, before we're making an overnight decision, I'm assuming during the course of a day, no one arrives. Correct. In that case, I would, yeah, I would suggest shifts. Shifts? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if, as long as we all wait here long enough, I'm still above the tattoo parlor after it closes. So, whoever is staying, I can come down, let them into upstairs of the tattoo parlor, and then go sleep. And then they could... Do they could do their watch and then let the next person? So we always that... have that good vantage point of the building. Correct. The setting up shifts is a very good idea to do a stakeout. There is one downside to your problem, and that's the reason that there is an upstairs to the tattoo parlor. It's because that's where the tattoo artist lives. 
<laughs> so I mean, you are you yourself are totally able to like sneak around freely and do whatever you please. However, you're going to have some kind of like Doctor Doolittle bullshit situation with animals in the cupboards if you want to try and keep everyone secret from the owner of this establishment. <laughs> Like people, uh, like I people, mean, he'll have to like rattle in the keys, and you'll have to Ace Ventura it. I mean, I could hide in a hide in a cover. Yes, no, actually, yeah, Mahiro would have an okay time. Uh, I could just sort of see that uh, one of the scenes from the Marx Brothers mm -hmm. play out. <laughs> just like the guy slowly, he thinks the room's haunted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You it's just... can't see, but I'm pinching my brow pretty hard right now. I mean, la last night I heard. Uh, last night when I was trying to get to go to sleep, I l heard something n n get knocked over in my room. I just did not. I did not engage. I, I just laid and just pretended it didn't happen. All right. In There's that no, case, there is no ghost in my house. The wraith doesn't exist. <laughs> One idea in the chat is have someone have Dirk assault the owner of the tattoo parlor on today just to make sure. <laughs> assault him once a day. Yeah. Um I would suggest then that I take the first watch for at least a couple of hours. Or we could be real we could all be really lazy and outsource this to a private <laughs> investigator. That's a not a good idea. Let's not do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah so let's do that. To recap, you've I'm got like to, uh... Yeah, you you've got Go like ahead, a Sam. week you've got like a week's van rental. No one appears over this first day and I don't know what your overnight plans are. Um also, I don't think any of you have attempted to contact Dr. Hunter. Merz, does Dr. Hunter ever try and contact any of the party while they're busy working? Um, after he took care of a couple of things um, back in Ireland, yes, he would um, probably send an email to Simon. So I'm just you know, relatively short. Um, Simon, I'm alive. I need at least a day to recover, but after that, I will be rejoining you as soon as possible. Remember, if possible, don't engage until I'm back. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, I will. After I see the email, I will first at least tell the people inside the room with me. Good news, Doc's okay. I'll send a text to the rest of the guys later. Apparently, he doesn't want us engaging him, despite the fact that I think marriage. Even if he, even if he, even if he did show up, we'd be able to take him down and get him to spill the beans about staff if he, where he has it, or if he even has it, but. I don't even think the guy's going to show back up here. It seemed like he left this place for dead and was going to go somewhere else, in my opinion. <laughs> Still on the Game Boy Color. PSP would be a bit gold step up. Then you could get lots of delicious weeabooey JRPGs. Yeah. And the Disgaea games. Yes. I think the Vita is out right now. Is out by now. In 2010, uh, I believe so. We're in 2011 now. But... That's true. Sorry. Sorry I'm sure it came out. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no? Uh, 2012, February 22nd, 2012, it came out in America. Uh, uh, and in the EU. Okay, so no Vita yet. No. GSP. Although you hear they're making a new thing already. Gosh, it seems like so soon. It sounds like it'll already be out like next year. Holy shit. Too bad Sony never had support for their consoles. Or their uh, hand portables. You say that, but it had a fucking excellent catalogue. of just that most of it was Japanese. You cut out there. And yeah, just, the most the stuff wasn't in localized. Yep. Yeah. 
So. God damn it. Your internet dying? Yeah, that goes next. Yep. And gone. Welcome back, Nix. Alright, hopefully that fixes it. No, I mean, sounds fine. Alright, sweet. Yes, okay. Know, everything froze for like 10 seconds and then it went like light speed. So I couldn't understand a word that anyone said. Yeah, but you just sounded kind of roboty on my end. And then you ah. pooped out. So, yes. Uh, night will fall in your current situation. What do? I think to be safe, we stake out tonight and then at least part of tomorrow, guys. So, we should start doing shifts. Yeah, I agree. So, I will definitely take be taking the first shift since I already have a good spot. And leaving most likely means we won't have access to this room again. So I will take at least the first three, possibly four hours. And then uh, would anyone like to volunteer slash have a good spot that they believe they can watch the house from? I mean, I could just hide in a tree. You own that truck for like that van for like a week. We also have a van out here. Fair enough. I'll take the first watch for a couple hours, then whoever feels up for losing some sleep can take the van for the next couple hours, then maybe a third one if we need it, and then we're back to morning, and I will be taking a nap. So, all of you can probably get home. Or uh, hotel. I will stay for the first shift inside the building, continually looking throughout it in case, like, the guy does show up, and if he doesn't first second shift someone else will come in and i'll head back to the hotel i'm gonna okay. hook up my hammock inside the inside the van cool in that case i believe we have a plan so all right and so night falls um vex it becomes apparent to you that Soon, well, I say, like, the, as the tattoo parlor closes, the guy's probably going to head back upstairs into his home. You know, Vex, a very, a good way of getting around this would be to see if the tattoo owner is gay. And, uh, woo him. From inside his house? Option. That's not a good move. I mean, it would have been a good idea to do that sooner but yeah now that is not a is an option idea. but maybe tomorrow character. i did roll a 30 on my hide so i'm pretty sure i could be in this motherfucker's bed while he's sleeping in the same bed and he's not gonna find me mate. yeah that's true oh so i want you to take my chances <laughs> but... not being seen as he gets ready for sleep <laughs> you uh, you silently like... shoot him with your silence pistol <laughs> he doesn't carry a silence pistol he has knives the most silent of pistols Oh, yeah, I just silently stab him to death. Uh, I could go all well, splinter, so like I do with that chihuahua. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the chihuahua! Uh, or, or you could just lay like a bunch of rose petals down and put on some lingerie. No, I think I'll do my best to just avoid him as he goes about his nightly ritual before he went to bed. Yep, that's fine. Ceiling, Vex, watch as you, watch as you sleep. Uh, he is... He's at home for, like, maybe an hour or so before he gets his shit together and heads out to go, you know, drinking, from what you can gather. Like, he's on the phone call with some people, and then he, he's like, alright, time to go get shit-faced. And do lots of drugs, and whatever the fuck he does with his day. Whatever those goddamn delinquents do with their free time. Yeah, exactly. All right. So I am once again alone in this apartment, and I am watching the building. Sweet. Try and find out where he finds it, where he hides his porn. Or you know I can are. instead stay focused on the job, oh, because Vex that is a professional most right. of the time. Oh, okay. Vex is not Nix. I like the idea of Vex also telling everyone, and also Vex is a professional saying it in the third person because you're high. <laughs> No, not gonna do that. No. No, okay. 
he's not like tripping or anything. Plus, it's been a long time. Like he would just be hyper focused for a while, and then he's good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see here. In the night, something does happen. You're goddamn right it does. And also, something happens outside. There is no, no. a manhole cover. And it clunks into the underside of your van. Ah, I thought this was going to be something I saw. Huh? What? <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. I was like, wait a second, where would it be? It would probably be right around here. Let's just, uh, <laughs> right fucking there. <laughs> so, uh, oh well. All right, so you said something happened and then something happened outside. Is that... I was just joking. When you went, hell yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Something happens with Vex. And also, something happens outside. Yeah. Uh, the okay. manhole cover slams into the underside of the van and you hear, like, a muttered cursing. Like, oh, fucking shit. And then the grinding sound of the manhole cover being slid from underneath the van. Uh, Mahara and Sandra, you were actually asleep, yes. Uh, can you both give me listen checks with minus 10, I believe it is? Because you're asleep. Oh. Listen, 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 listen. There you are. Minus 10? Mm hmm. You're asleep. Fine. Negative 4. Holy guacamole. <laughs> You sleep peacefully. You know, uh, there is, like, stuff for, like, being able to be a light sleeper, and they don't have that by default, so no. And it's not like someone opens a uh, manhole cover by, like, slamming it up with full force! <laughs> like, then, yeah, sure, they'd probably notice that. Uh, I, I wish I should have rolled a one for I did the weird cartoony get up and get, like, a glass of water while... Like just you just you just like... you just tumble out the back of the van like where's my house? <laughs> walk over them, <laughs> get a glass of water, and then walk over them again, and then go back inside. <laughs> the fuck? All right. Well, regardless, they're still sleeping. Yes. I do have vision of this, though. Correct. Correct. Vex out in the street. You see a person. Do you want me to make a spot check, or do I just see them? No, you just see this dude. Uh, or you should be able to, right? He's there next to the van to you. Yes. Excellent. Uh, a fellow in like tattered rags sort of scrambles out from underneath the van. The moment that I see him, I'm immediately going to turn on my. Uh, um... What is what is a singular of this even called? I guess earpiece. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make sure my earpiece is switched on, and then immediately get into contact with everyone else. Let both Mahara and Sandra know that someone just popped out of a man, or what I assume is a manhole, underneath their vehicle, and let Simon and is Dirk still in the building as well, or did he go home, or rather not home, back to the hotel for the night? I don't see where Dirk, Dirk would leave. All right. In that case, I'm gonna let Dirk and Simon know that someone is someone suspicious just popped up on the street in front of them, and I believe he's heading towards the building. Understood. Preparing for contact then. Okay. At this as well, I'm going to. Hmm. My move silently and hide from before is still applying, correct? Or no, you're, you're really a quote unquote in a new scene. You're going to have to do it again okay. to, to sneak out. In that case, I'm going to first, I'm going to move silently. Okay. Then I'm going to do hide. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so where do you take cover? Like, the actual doorway to this parlor is like right there. All right, I'm going to make my way downstairs. I'm going to get behind the doorway and I'm just going to crack it the tiniest bit. So I make sure that I have vision of him, but I'm not actually getting in his vision unless he's, like, seriously staring at this doorway, like, making sure, okay. like, oh, is that cracked or not? Can you roll me a 1d4? 
I can do that. Oh, god damn it! Are you really rolling to see if the door's squeaky? No. No, he, he's gonna. He's rolling to see if the alarm goes off. No. Uh, the oh. door is was locked, but thankfully it's one of the kinds where the latch will unlock itself if it's open from the inside. Oh, thank God! I thought you were about. I thought you were rolling squeaky door, and I was. No, like, no, no, no. Like that's the kind of thing that you would have known if you'd <laughs> went through the door at least once. I didn't mention it then, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that again. Okay. Uh, no, uh, the, the door was locked, but it's, it's, as I say, it's one of those ones where as long as you pull down on it from the inside, then it just unlatches the lock as well. If it were a one, you were locked in. <laughs> if it were a two, uh, it would be really, really noisy to unlatch it, but I would also have then said, you can just, like, try not to open the door instead, then you'll have to wait. But yes, no, in this case, you're able to open the door and get it open a crack. I do have vision of him. You're right? asking if it's a woman? It is not. It is... It's not even human. Whatever the fuck that oh, okay, is. never mind. Yeah, I, I, that bandage just made it look like it had boobs. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know, it's uh, now that you're down on the ground level, uh, Vex, you can see that this thing is a thing and not a person. It's moving in like a very herky jerky style. Mm-hmm. Like almost like his I'm, body I'm, was. By the way, um, anything you let me know here, I am going to be relaying to all of the others over. That your piece so i'm assuming by this point mahara and sandra are awake yes uh i feel like sandra slept through being told through the earpiece but mahara woke up yeah okay <laughs> sandra's negative four in that case uh simon dirk and mahara are all aware of anything yeah. that i'm seeing at this point because i'm going to relay it all to them so go on okay so yes it's moving in a very very herky jerky style um and you can see that this person is just, like, covered in bandages and rags. Uh, can you give me a spot check, please? This is, like, about probably there. Nix, uh, Vex spot check, please. Have I heard? Can I that again? I don't know. Nixie. Oh, he's typing. Yeah. Sorry, was that spot check for me? It did the same thing where it, like... Oh, where your thing lagged out. Uh, yes, yeah. please, uh, spot check. Alright. Um, by the way, I'm not sure if this will apply here, but... Uh, drows have a bonus to at the beginning of a combat scene, so that's why I'm not sure if this will apply. But any spot or um... oh wait, no, not drows. Uh, infiltrators at the beginning of the combat scene have a plus three circumstance bonus to spot, I believe. Uh, that is generally combat related, although I will take into right. account. Like that's the kind of thing where an infiltrator will look at someone and then be like, "Where's the weak point on them?" Uh, let's see. All right, then. Uh, you notice that this person's shadow, like, there are street lamps down there, uh, it's moving independently of the body that's walking around. Uh, it's Again, hard... I'm going to relay this to everyone else at the same time as I'm learning it. Yep. Uh, it's hard to make out what the shadow's doing. It does not look like it matches the body shape of this thing. Like, it is stretched out, and it's moving its arms in a curious way. Uh, you know, with a 25... Whenever that thing moves, the shadow beneath does act, but you're not entirely convinced that they are one and the same. It's, it's as I say, from your perspective, though, you can't really make it out because it's on the ground and you're ground level and it's like away from you. There's only so much that just physics right. will let you see. Uh, likewise, um, it just itself and its movement is not making any sound. You don't even have to do a listen check for that. Like it is just, it is moving silently towards uh, this doorway. Uh, and I will give you the full description. <clears throat> uh, the shambling figure appears to be an almost stick like humanoid, but everything is just a little bit off. All the proportions of their body seem to be half baked, as though they'd been drawn and brought to life by someone who didn't have an exact idea of how anatomy should be working. Uh, beneath the vast quantity of rags and bandages is pale, almost rotted-looking flesh, except 
flesh would at least have some kind of semblance of colour to this. This is the kind of, like, pale shredded white of packing tape. Uh, and behind it is a grin that is far too wide and far too inhumane, disguising far too many teeth. Large black lips line it. Uh, they look almost like oil in the way that the light shines off of them. It is probably the only is part of this thing's body that is reflective. Doppelganger. Um, <laughs> is it a mummy? It is not a mummy. No. going to be real good. Can I make a knowledge shadow kind check? You absolutely can. Oh, whoops. Hmm. Can all of us make it since he's relaying this to us? You're not looking at it first hand, so you can do so at minus three. One of these days, I'm going to have to pick up a book of Shadow Kind and read it. Right. What's a Shadow Kind? It's a fairy. It's an orc. Yeah, that's the one of my favorite. Yeah, uh, Sandra and Harry, are you going to be tr uh, trying Shadow Kind checks? Uh, actually, uh... I'm, I I think I have to be trained in it, right? No, you guys have been running with the crew for long enough. You don't have like much of any shit in it, but you've you've been in the cut for long enough. Yeah, that's uh, intelligence minus three. Mahara thinks it's a fucking dragon. Uh, no. All right, uh, Shade will Jackal. Shade will take a crack at it. Not much better in her case. <laughs> hey, Duck, want to try and savant it? What's the roll? Uh, shadow knowledge, shadow kind minus three. Or just intelligence if you have no points in it. <laughs> Dirk's Dirk's intelligence. Duck had it for being an orc. I can't remember if Pets put any I'm, points I'm in it, though. That's the question. Can Duck be a savant? No. No, okay. That's a three. Not this time. Ooh, okay, no. Um, You're not sure what it is, to be honest. This thing is, is far too uncommon. Considering you threw a 17 at it, Vex, it stands out as being uncommon, like, it does not strike up anywhere on your list. You have no fucking idea what you're looking at. Uh, and a lack of knowledge can be said to be just about as scary in this thing's case. It makes right. its way up to the front door and, like, leans against it with its whole body and, like, just sort um, of shudders a little bit. So once I'm entirely certain that it's focused on the building and the door in front of it, I am going to, I'm assuming that my hide and move silently is still applying, yep. I'm going to make my way out of the building and start, like, stealthily... And stop! ...approaching right there. Okay. Let's see here. Uh... I don't know. It was in that twenty on that height, and it's a thirty-three. Is it really spotting me? I didn't say it was spotting you. We should have tried. Uh, that's that's things range. Okay. Rumor sense. When you make it as far as that, you feel awful. You just feel really, really bad, and you're not entirely sure why. Could you make a fortitude save and a will save, please? All right, real quick first, though. When you say bad, do you mean, like, physically ill or a, like, mental condition or Both. fear? That's why I said fortitude oh. and will. Oh, okay. Here's four. God, I am rolling so high this session. Here's will. No. And I'm going to burn an action point on Will. Okay. Oh, poor Will. Uh, 1d6, d2, right? 2d6, d1. <sighs> Every single time. Okay, so that's 21 on my Will save. Okay. Uh, you are fine. Well, I say fine. It feels terrible, but whatever happens doesn't lay its fucking roots on you. That's whatever it is. 
Like there's a moment where your stomach feels like it's falling out and there's just a terrible sensation of like claws digging into your body and trying to pull away at vitality from you. But you uh, resist. By the way, after making those rules, like making sure that I'm okay, I am going to whisper um, into my, and like I'm going to speak as, as softly as I feel I can while still making myself heard through the earpiece. Um, that it seems to have some kind of aura around it that inspires either fear or illness. Yeah, like people, you, you hear it from Vex, like he sounds shaken or hungover or something. Shaken, but not stirred. Okay. Correct, he is shaken, but he is not stirred. <laughs> for God sake. Damn it. And at that, I believe we're going to leave that cliffhanger there. I'm sorry that it's only oh, a two and a half hour goodness. session, but I am... Um, Tired and not very well, and I'm spending. Yeah, when we I'm have a late limits. start today. Yeah, technically late start, the best kind of late. It should be back to normal soon. It will be uh, by next session. Uh, daylight savings will catch up. Cool. Mm-hmm. I hope that you guys have enjoyed yourselves. Always. Uh, mm-hmm. Congratulations, Doctor Jonathan Hunter. They're no longer a vampire. Woo! I'm happy. <laughs> Fuck you, Floof. Uh, <laughs> he died 13 times on the operating table and came back just fine. And uh, it would seem Shade is trying bashfully to court Mahera, which is amusing oh, to me oh. as a character, as a, as a player, to be like, yes, go, character, try your bestest. You're terrible at this, but try. <laughs> uh, it's, it's Lord 2. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's, she is so fucking out of her place. It's the sprightly happy fairy, and she is smitten. <laughs> There's no Shade idea what to do. Like, Shade is kind of like almost all of my characters. Like, she's the edgiest, but she's trying to get there with that romance. You gotta get that city. And yeah. You, the, a weird creature here showed up and you don't know what the fuck it is or what it can do and only I know and I can't fucking wait for this to go terribly for everyone except for me Ooh. I'm gonna really enjoy that I don't know about that I don't know about that I, I mean those were like some I those can... those were some shit hot rolls right there okay I'll give you that I had some pretty perfect rolls I don't think I rolled beneath a hold up let me scroll I don't think I got beneath a 16 all session though Overall, yeah, no, uh, I don't think you did either. It, you've, you've, you've I did done... not get beneath the sixty in all session. Yeah, you did pretty, pretty fucking good rolls right there. And also, we want to say that all of uh, Merz's rolls were pretty fucking good. Uh, there were three that were very, very, very close, and fucking those up would have led to some pretty bad things, where the character starts taking damage and things like permanent hit points are just lost, like things Ooh. like that, and none of that happened. So good fucking job. Nice. Good job with your rolls. You did not you did not lose any permanent stats. Um you didn't have to try and fight the beast. Like it was fucking you pieced right through. Good job. And with All that right, so just to be entirely certain, hmm? no level up, correct? <laughs> correct. Alright, well then in that case I just have to get to sleep. I got work at seven AM. Yep. Yeah. Have a good one. Don't forget to drink some fucking water. Yeah, I've been drinking water all night. Bye. Right. Yep. Bye, everybody. I will yep. see you all tomorrow evening. Yeah. 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 If you're watching Bye-bye. the VOD or you're watching in the stream, have yourselves a lot of my fucking good time and take yeah. care. Bye. Bye, stream. Bye, YouTube.